What's up, DIY queens? It's your design bestie, Kara Newhart, and this is Make Space. Welcome back to Make Space. Today, I have Rachel, and we are diving into all things organization. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited. I'm hoping we can, you know, fix our whole lives organization-wise before the holidays, <laughs> but no pressure. <laughs> you can. You right? can. We can. So I'd love to first dive into your approach to organization because I think what many people don't realize is that there's no one right method. So right. how do you think about the process of organizing? So I'm a big fan of looking at the stuff that you have and decluttering first. A lot of people skip mm. that decluttering step because it's very emotional or yeah. they procrastinate because they don't want to do it or and it'll take more time. But I really highly recommend doing it because then it will allow you to not have to go back and organize the same space two days later. Right. Um, I really think that we all have too much stuff. Yep. Uh, I'm including myself. Um, so I'm not you know, promoting that everyone has to be a minimalist or... I just want you to be realistic with really how long have you not used that thing that you're looking at um, right. and when's the next time you're going to use it? Do you love it? Um, so just the decluttering process is something that I don't want people to skip and they run out and go get bins and just organize things in the bins. Right. That, process, that part of it, of the organizing process is absolutely key to doing mm -hmm. it. And so when you're doing that, are you pulling everything out of a space, starting clean, like look at it I, all kind of thing. Yes. And so that is the overwhelming part for people. So right. I don't want people to say, okay, yes, I'm going to use my entire weekend and we're going to get my closet organized and then take everything out. And then 15 minutes into it, you're like, I can't do this anymore because it's right. too overwhelming. <laughs> yes. So start small. I tell people, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you put a doctor's appointment or any other appointment on your calendar, put an appointment on your calendar, make it 15 minutes. That okay. might sound little, that might sound too much to some people. But after that 15 minutes, there's going to be a lot of others, things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Send things to donation, send things to get repaired to the dry cleaner, trash. There's all these things that happen after that decluttering process. So give right. yourself some time, make it fun if you uh -huh. can. I mean, I don't know, as, as fun as you can, open the windows, give yourself a reward. If you get rid of five sweaters, maybe you buy one that you really love and fits you to supplement for those five that you've let go and either donated or consigned. Right. But it's just... I want people to understand that it's a way of life and not this sort of one-time event. I organize my closet. I organize my kitchen mm. and then it's finished. I believe right. it's more of just an, a way of how you're going to live in the future. Right. So it takes the overwhelm out of it, which I think is why people are so reluctant to get started because it feels like I have to come in a whole weekend or a week and like buy things and like spend all my time doing this. So it's like, right. no, thank you. Like, <laughs> and, and it is not about buying the bins, even though everything yeah. at Target in the container store, every single store has an organizing section now. Yeah. Um, if you go online and you go into stores, but I don't want people to be intimidated by that. You can mm -hmm. get organized without a cent. Um, yeah. You really can. I think the products aid in the organization. And that's the next thing after the decluttering process and the you know functional systems being put into place. Those products aid in the organization, mm -hmm. but they aren't the process. And that's not where you should start, which I know a lot of people kind of start, you know, going up and down the, the container store aisles and Target and all that just to buy the pretty bin and right. then stuff things into it and not know what's inside of it. Uh -huh. But I highly recommend against that if you can, right. <laughs> if you can like, stop yourself. <laughs> it's like hide it all away in the bins. Yeah. Um, so I know I hear people, I know I hear people saying things like I'm not organized or, you know, feeling like it's a personality trait. Do you think it is a lot to do with personality or it's like a skill we need to learn? I think it is a skill that people can learn. I think some people are more type A, more organized. And right. then there are some people who have some executive functioning issues where it doesn't come as natural to them. Right. But that's just to say, I think there are systems that you can put in place and everyone's definition of organization is also different. I want mm -hmm. to remind people mm -hmm. of that. It's not just this Pinterest perfect, you know, color coded rainbow order. That's not organization to a lot of people. And yeah. then to some people, they're like, yes, I want that. And I want everything to be, you know, alphabetized and color coded and my spice is all decanted. It's really individual lies. And I want people to understand organization for me, at least, and what I try to tell my clients and anyone else I can tell, it's just, it's not about the actual. I'm going to get organized and have the end result. It's to mm. live a better life. We have, there's so many other things that are going on that you can't control in life. The world right. goes on around you, kids, work, the world. This is something you can control in your space, in your workspace. 
Um, so why not control something is my <laughs> view yeah. and let it be less stressful for you on other parts of your, um, cause it bleeds into other areas of your life. Completely. Yes. Yeah. That is right on track with the last episode we talked about, like elements of how to make your house where it supports your well being. And one of those was like systems. And the idea is like, if you control your environment, then you are like setting up something that supports you. So when there is all the unexpected things, you have something you can lean on that you like know is there because you need a hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, you know, people who are trying to lose weight, put your gym bag that's packed by the front door, by the mudroom door, wherever you're going out and think about that um, yeah. process and get it just little things that you can do making if your kids, uh, you know, bring lunch every day, it can you put stuff that they can actually help make the lunches and lower down drawers so that you mom, dad, whoever it is, don't need to grab the stuff and they can be empowered to do it themselves. I mean, it's teaching again, yourself, your family, just little tips and tricks that will go a huge long way to save you time and money. If you're, you don't want to be overbuying something that you find in the closet three days later, yeah. um, you know, it impacts our entire life. And I don't think people realize that until right. you start to go through how much you accumulate. Mm hmm. And what I just kind of heard is that like the shift we need to make me included is like, I've always viewed organization as like, putting things in a physical spot. And instead, it's more about like how I'm living in the space. And yes. like where things are going is based off of like how I'm living and not about me being like, you belong here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's part of it. I yeah. think that the other part of it is the systems and you're just functioning in daily life, right? right? If we put all of the light bulbs in one place, that makes it easier to then find a light bulb and not have to run around your whole house, wasting yeah. all this money and time, um, finding the light bulb. It's so simple and stupid <laughs> really yeah. in the end, but we go into people's homes and toilet paper is in multiple different places. Uh -huh. and and then you go out and run and buy more toilet buy paper again, and then you find, you can't it, find yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just to make life easier, right. but it's not just about the, the physical stuff. Cause I'm a big believer in physical clutter creates emotional clutter. Yes. So seeing that stuff on your bedroom floor that you haven't put into the closet yet. And you're like, Oh, you know what? Those shoes were $300. I don't wear them. So then you start feeling shame about them. And then mm. you're holding on to them just because of the shame, for example, yeah. but then there's actually not room in your closet. So why right. not take some time, declutter it, consign them, donate them, get the tax write up, whatever it is, yeah. and then make room for things that you actually are wearing and make it a functional closet for you at that point in time. Right. So when it comes to shame, I feel like organization is so emotional and so like loaded and we yes. shame ourselves in all directions. Like look, it shouldn't look like this, or I need to keep this, or I can't get rid of this. So what is like some advice for working with that shame instead of just being like, no, oh, I'm not going to look at it. Not going to think about it. Like, <laughs> I, I mean the industry, the organizing industry, and look, I've been working as an or organizing expert for almost 15 years. Yeah. It, it's meant to do that to you. Right. They keep saying, buy, you know, bins, have your um, mm. home look like Pinterest or what's on Instagram that you're sharing, but it's just not realistic. And look, I've been a contributor to it. I yeah. edit my photos and we pull things out and mm. all of that. But in the end, it's not helping people because I think people need to go on this emotional journey because it is very emotional right. and some things have more emotional attachment than others. Um, but you need to go through that in order to get to the best organized life for you as the person and shame, mm. hold on to that and let it guide you through, but don't let it be the stopping point of, I'm not going to go and do it because I have, I'm, I feel badly for holding on to Aunt Sally's frame that I'm never going to use. And so I hold on it just because I know Aunt Sally, yeah, Aunt right. Sally's not going to remember that you have it. Right. Let it go and create this home and environment that you want to live in that reflects who you are today. Like yeah. I know a ton of people, they hold on to their stuff from college or they hold on to their stuff. I'm a mom, you know, before children, because they're like, well, I'm going to get back to that weight. Or I remember mm -hmm. myself back in college. It's not you now. You need right. to be dressing, feeling holding things in your home that are for you, that you love, that you use currently, because otherwise mm. all that stuff around you is going to impact you emotionally in some way or another. Yeah. It's so interesting that we do do that waiting. Like we're waiting for this to get better or this to change. And then holding on to physical items to hold space for that waiting is just a lot. <laughs> like it's, it's just, it's, I yeah. think people hold on to for that reason and for sentimental reasons. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are very, um, 
upset about, let's say it's a person that's passed away or they'll keep, you know, X, Y, or Z because this person reminds them of their grandmother. But Mm -hmm. I will always say to them, if it's in like a save box in your basement, in a pile of something, and you're not actually looking at it, are you really holding on to it for the right reasons? And does the physical item, if let's say you got rid of it or you took a picture of it or actually displayed it, you know, would getting rid of the physical item get rid of the memories of that person or the value of that. So I think people need to take a a good look at those huge save boxes that they have for their kids when they started, when they were first born or their grandmother's China, you know, instead of having the entire 12 set piece, maybe Mm -hmm. take a bowl and use it to drop your keys in it, in your front entry, or put something, one piece in a shadow box and look at it as a decoration on your wall. Like there are other ways to hold on to sentimental items rather than just, or take a picture make a book, make it a coffee table book. Right. Um, and then you don't need to hold on to the physical stuff, which will might weigh you down even, even more. Right. And then there's another way to like better document that memory. Like if you're writing about it or you have a photo, it's like you're actually capturing the story of the memory and then that can be passed along versus the item. Everyone's it's like, it gets so many down the line and it's like, I don't want this. Like, this is great. Great grandma's bolt like cool bye right. like I didn't right. know her like I know exactly yeah. and there's no sentimental value for you yeah. getting it or you know a lot of um people when their parents downsize into mm-hmm. like that smaller condo or the nursing home then they're like here take yeah. it all I'm sure you want it and the kid's going uh I don't want it yeah. I'm just out of college or I'm in my new house and I don't have room for it mm-hmm. but then they get it all and then they're meant to deal with it um right. things that they don't even have sentimental attachment to So I just tell people, and as soon as you can start doing that process and going through it, even though it might feel like, oh, I don't have time to do it, it's going to save so much emotional um, and time uh, when you get to the end of it and when you're actually having to deal with it. And if you are in an emotional state, it's much harder. Yeah. And then back to your strategy about like 15 minutes at a time, like don't go through the whole basement, get a box and do one box and like, correct. Yeah. Start in a corner, move to the side do a category of things. And I always say, start with the easiest thing because then you will be incentivized to continue and do it and say, you know what? That wasn't as bad. I have literally in 15 years have never had someone say to me, I'm so upset that I organized or that didn't, you know, (laughs) spur on another room or make me feel better because it just, it's empowering. And I want to tell people, empower yourself, empower your children, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There are multiple ways to feel good about the organization process, saving money, not wasting things, um, tons of things, getting money back for Mm -hmm. things that you've consigned. Yeah. It's like the hardest part is starting. And then once you get that momentum and you also get to see like physical product progress, which is so yes. rewarding. So like yes. just start and then you'll be able to keep going. Yeah. Give like yourself it. a reward. Yeah. Treats. That's how I do it. I like yes. bribe myself with treats, <laughs> which is usually cake pops. But um, so for me in like a parallel space, um, like watching everyday people get inspired by show stopping before and afters, I feel like I spend a lot of time helping them unwind like what's actually behind it instead of just Mm -hmm. looking at sort of these curated spaces captured in one moment and kind of digging into like how can we realistically use this as inspiration and translate it into your actual space versus just using it as like a I want it to look like that. Yes. Um, And I'm sure the same thing happens in the organization space with the rainbow bins and stuff. So absolutely. How do you approach that part of the process? Uh, I mean, people come to me all the time and they're like, I want my pantry to look like this and they'll show me a picture. Mm -hmm. And so we will say to them, all right, well, tell me about this picture. What are you liking about this picture? And we'll break it down. Is it the type of bin? Is it the fact that there are bins or are there glass jars? Do you like that there's labels so that people who are coming into the pantry can see the labels and read the labels? Do you like that it's categorized by... So we'll we'll keep going down at whatever the picture is and dissect it because there's a reason that they are feeling attracted to that photo. And then we will talk to them about their actual lives because Mm -hmm. I want it to be realistic for their lives. I mean, we've had people come and bring like these celebrity pantries. I'm using pantries Uh as an example again, (laughs) and there are like 50 of each thing. And I'm like, okay, is that realistic in your small pantry? And do you shop at Costco or where are you getting these 50 things? Because that's what you like about this picture that everything is like symmetrical. And that's just not realistic for most people. Um, you know, they will have three cereal boxes instead of 50 of the same one, you know, lined up. So we'll definitely try to break it down and figure out how is this 
picture translated into your everyday life and how you want to function. And remember, mm -hmm. let's add in any children, any pets, anyone else in the home, because they're going to have to upkeep it. Right. Um, I tell people there's a big difference between something that's neat and something that's organized. So mm, okay. there, something can look neat, but not be organized. It can be in a bin, not, you don't see it. There's tops on it, but that's not organized. You're just throwing right. something into a bin, but if it's organized and we realistically live in our homes and all the, and, and move things around, it might not look neat all the time. Everything might not be lined up, but you can get back to that very quickly. If right. someone were to come over, there's a place for everything. You guys lived in the home, but then you can put it back wherever it needs to go and it will be neat and organized at the same time. Yeah, I love that shift because yeah, just throwing it in the bin is like a quick like visual and it's like we're going for the system and the like intentionality and thought behind it. And that's what's really gonna make it like sustainable. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. look, I love bins for things like in a mud room, for example, don't yeah. put a top on something or don't put, make people put their shoes on a shoe rack. If you right. know yourself <laughs> and your family and you're like, I just want an open bin, throw it in the bin. Right. Great. But you know, your shoes are all in that bin and that bin should not contain, I don't know, something else in, right. in the mud room. But, um, right. so I think there are, you just have to be thinking about what's the function of the actual product that you're putting in. What, type of organization does it serve um, mm -hmm. for and that then space? How, like how is everyone else going to be actually able to use it? Like if we're Correct. used to kicking our shoes off on the floor, like we still got to make it easy. So yep. <laughs> we can't go yep. some crazy plan. Yeah. Don't be buying that, you know, Ikea thing that like pushes up and you have to open it and then yeah. don't do that because uh -huh. no one's going to do it and you're going to buy that piece. It's going to be in your front entry and the shoes are going to be right in front of it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and it'll be taking up space right. for nothing. Yeah. Right. So when you go into people's homes to do organization projects, are there any like common, I guess, themes for what we're doing wrong? Like just things you see a lot that we're all struggling with? I think people keep a lot more than they should. I mean, I know they should. They yeah. they are. Um, so I think that's a common thing. In terms of doing it wrong, I wouldn't say it's necessarily wrong. It's right. just a common thing that people are doing. Um, and I think people are something that's wrong. I think they're going and buying the bin first. They're not mm. measuring. They're not looking at the aesthetic that they want. And they're just kind of throwing something in there, but they're not thinking about the functionality. They're just going and shopping. They're like, I love what this looks like. And they're putting it in, but it actually doesn't work for the system that they want or the space. Right. And so I think shopping before is the wrong thing to do. I think you need to go with a list know what you want, go with measurements um, and realize why am I actually buying this bin? Um, right. it's Cause it's not about that. Yeah. And then you yeah. shopping, shopping can be your treat. Like you yeah. decluttered and now you get to buy bins. And that's yeah. very exciting to me. I don't know about other people, but <laughs> buying it baskets. It is to me. Is I like, don't know about Whoa. other people. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay. So I worked with a professional organizer one time and she was very early on in her career. Very, very sweet. Made my linen closet look amazing, but I had the worst time like upkeeping it. So mm -hmm. how do you think about organization in terms of like setting up these systems that you know are going to be like ongoing and sustainable for people? So I think you have to do simpler is better is my main yeah. thing. Um, and so with you, I would just say, and I would ask if I was the one working on that and I would come back to you and say, Hey, we work on your linen closet, but why do you think you can't keep it up? Is it because you don't like to fold and everything was folded. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. because, I mean, is that one of the reasons? I mean, that's I one of them. Yeah. I think there okay. was many yeah. things that went wrong, but yeah, definitely yeah. Big so one. I would just ask them. <laughs> so I would say, how can we put a system in your linen closet where I know the typical linen closet might have folded things, but why don't we do something where we're rolling it or we're just putting them in, in actual bins and you don't have to fold it. If you're okay with not folding it, have yeah. a huge bin and throw it into it. And it's just here are all the washcloths, here are all the face towels, here are all the, you know, whatever it is, uh, right. flat sheets. But I would, I would just keep asking you, why do you think that didn't work? Um, mm. And then let's tweak the system because you can look at a space in one way, but there are many ways to, if it's just straight shelves, there are many ways to do different things in that. And maybe we had to demo the, the shelves and right. do something differently. Um, you know, a lot of people hate folding. A lot of people hate hanging. So uh -huh. it's like talking to them about, how we can manipulate that space, that closet space to work for them and what they're more likely to do. I don't right. care that everyone else folds their towels for your linen closet, for example. I would say, well, what is going to work for you? And right. it might be trial and error, but that's what I would ask you. I'd start asking you about yeah, how you I want like it to that. function. 
So making sure it like actually fits the person's like approach too, which mine is definitely like put it in a bin, like done. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, and some people keep their sheets, for example, by bedroom and they're all together Mm -hmm. in one pillowcase under, you know, whatever in one section. Some people say, all right, I want all top sheets here and bottom sheets here. And so everyone is different, which I think makes it exciting, but it is something that you really have to think about because it is not a one size fits all. Right. Right. And very interesting because I was like, oh, I could like organize myself. And then having someone professional come in and just watching like the way she thought about it. Yeah. So different than like mine at all was just so, I don't know. It's like nice. And it's like, wait a second. I'm actually not good at this because I haven't been trained in it. I haven't done this as a job. And so I was putting like a lot of pressure on myself to do something I wasn't like skilled at or practiced at. So I think for the everyday person, like if you can find someone to come help you. Cause it's, magical. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I don't want you to have felt shame that you didn't fold. You just don't fold. Like yeah. I was saying to someone the other day, I'm like, I don't iron, like I just right. don't do it. And they're like, what? Like, yeah. so no. <laughs> it's not happening. Um, but I think breaking it down, figuring out what works for you and knowing that going into it, then you're going to be keeping up with that space that much more. Right. Because if right. you put a system in that just, you think, people want or you you should be doing, then it's going to be totally wrecked, uh-huh. you know, two days later after you actually used it. And so the point of it is to make sure it is working for you um, right. in your space. Right. So, it, and then the person coming in, any professional organizer is not there to judge you, is not mm-hmm. there to shame you, um, and is not emotionally attached to your space like you are. And again, you might think, oh, it's a linen closet. I'm not emotionally attached to it. But you have lived in the space, you've worked, you know, with your linen closet, we're coming in and looking at it and going, okay, here are some things that I can see just based on it and talking to you that might work for it. And you've been living in the house for however long and seen it in probably one way for a certain amount of time. So it's, it's nice to get an outside opinion that is not tied to the space emotionally. Yeah. Cause it usually is. I've seen, I, you see it in one way. And mm-hmm. often, like, however you set it up when you moved in and you were, like, unpacking thousands of boxes and shoving things, it's, like, done. That's how it stays. And then there it yep. is until you, like, really – to rethink about it is, like, hard to get that. Yes. I mean, we help people move, and I can tell you that if you haven't thought about it, most people move their, with their daily lives, work, kids, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and it's just, like, a part of their daily life, and then they go on with it. And yeah. half the time, the boxes don't get fully unpacked, and then yep. let's say they're all unpacked, but it stays there until – because why would it move? It stays right. there until either you get so frustrated with the system that's in place or you're uh-huh. moving again. Right. Um, so there's not much, you know, thought and time um, put into it, you know, for, for the most part. So, right. right. Yeah. That's so true. Okay. The other thing I wanted to cover is the holidays. Cause I feel like yes. many things going on, but most people are either kind of, we do the post holiday scramble where we just got a lot of stuff in our house. We were just out of our routine for a long time. Things are a mess and we're like, Oh, I got to fix it. And then we dedicate January to organizing. But I think my goal is like maybe some strategies going into the holidays that we can slowly start doing things or set us up for success. So we're not in like a whirlwind of like, ah, it's a mess. I, I think that's <laughs> a great idea. And look, you are not alone. I would, I, that they call January get organized month because right. so much has come in, you know, over the mm-hmm. holidays in December. And so if I'm giving people advice on things that they can do now and through the holidays, it would say, I would say, think of a few areas, not your whole house, but think right. of a few areas that you can go through to really declutter before stuff comes in. So for example, in your kitchen, because we start or want to bake more during the holidays or be cooking during the holidays, can you just take 15 minutes and go through your kitchen drawers and say, you know what? I have three spatulas. One of them is kind of fraying on the end or whatever it is. I'm not going to use it and go through your kitchen drawers, not the entire kitchen and say to yourself, okay, I'm going to clear this out. And you know what? I haven't used it I didn't use it last holiday season. Mm. Probably you're not going to use it again this holiday season. So give yourself permission and let that go. So kitchen is a a quick one, I feel like, for most people. And again, not the whole kitchen, just maybe your drawers or maybe your plates for a better holiday, but just something holiday related in your kitchen. Then I think people should look at their holiday decorations. If they Mm -hmm. haven't put them up or even if they have already put them up, there are going to be those things that are still left in the bins that you haven't used this year. Uh Or you're like, you know what? I didn't use it last year. Again, you're probably not going to use it this year. If you didn't love it last year and put it up, 
chances are it's going to stay in the bin again this year. Right. That's going to give you a great indication of, you know what, these ornaments are probably on their way out. I bought another set this year that I love and want to use. These that have been in there for a few years, it's time to declutter. So I think looking at your decorations is another area that you can start to do now. Again, especially if you've already decorated, there might be some stuff still left in there or right. you're going to be decorating and looking at it. Other things are, again, things that you might use for guests mm. before the holidays. So maybe it's extra plates, paper plates, all the utensils, things like that, things for the guest room, things that you're not using all the time in your house, but could use a little refresh going through. Are you holding on to too many sheets for the guest room bed yeah. where guests really only come before the holidays? Get rid of the three because you only need one um, right. or two sets sort of thing. So look at those areas, do a 15 minute, do maybe a 30 minute and do like a quick purge, not for the whole house, but think of those areas that are also going to be used during the holidays and or think about a closet or toys, because those yeah. are going to be things that are coming in for the holidays. I mean, we all know as parents, like a new shining toy is going to get played <laughs> with a hundred <laughs> times more than anything yes. that's in either your child's outgrown or that's broken. Those are the easy ones. Get rid of those. Right. Um, and if you can involve your child, involve your child. A lot of parents will say to me, oh my gosh, no, my child holds on to everything. But right. there are some things, again, if you can start with your child and say, it's the holidays. We know Santa, mm -hmm. whoever is going to be coming in soon, gifts are going to be coming in. Let's take five things out that you don't play with anymore or that right. you have outgrown and give that to someone else who could use it for the holidays because so much more stuff is going to be coming in. And right. if they can't see that because it's hard to envision things coming in and it might be harder, then save that for something that's after the holidays. And now the new bright, shiny truck is there and the old damaged car can go because the, you know your son's going to be playing with that new shiny truck yeah. Much more than those broken toys that won't be, you know, touched after yeah. that. But, um, or if you've asked for more clothes, time mm -hmm. to go through your, your closet and look at it and say, you know what, realistically, I haven't touched it. I'm not going to touch it this holiday season. I don't like it. The brown denim skirt, I don't know, making this up is yeah. now out of style. Right. Um, and so it's not on trend and I'm not going to hold on to it. And I'm going to go consign it so I can get some money for the holiday season, or I'm mm -hmm. going to go donate it and get the tax right up to end of the year on a good note. So yeah. there's a ton of different spaces you can look at. I love that though. I love a, like thinking of specifically how you're going to have holidays and like what's coming in and then focusing on those areas. It will make the holidays that much less stressful. You don't mm. want to be digging through a pile of like 15 different sheets for the one yeah. sheet for your niece that needs it in the <laughs> guest room. Like the right. holidays are stressful enough for people with guests or without guests, going to different parties, not remembering what platters you actually have in your kitchen, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Just give yourself a little bit more control and a little bit more, you know, stress-free holiday enjoyment because your space will feel that much more organized and more settled, um, mm -hmm. you know, before you start the chaos of things. And simpler, then you're not like juggling yes. things. You have space for people and the connection and like actually, yeah. yeah and you time. can go in and see your inventory, right? And right. so you can see like, do we need more paper plates? Do I need more napkin rings? Whatever, what is it? Or do mm -hmm. I have 50 million that I can't remember because, you know, Thanksgiving, whatever it was, right. was over a year ago. And I bought them 12 times because I keep Correct. hiding them out of sight. And <laughs> like, yeah. 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 I love that. So I think another interesting idea is that, you know, part of organization starts when we buy something, like the mm -hmm. fact that we're buying too much and bringing too much in. Yes. And so do you have any tips for like making purchases in a way that's better that we're going to stay organized by. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm a, I'm not a minimalist. I just, I feel like I'm realistic and we yeah. all buy too much stuff. Like we like something new that's come on trend or I need to have X, Y, or Z, the new phone, a new phone comes out every year, Yeah, but you have to be more conscious about what you're actually bringing in and, or you're doing this sort of one in one out rule that I like mm -hmm. to tell people. So a new iPhone has come out. I'll use that as an example or a phone. What are you doing with the old one? And people will say, Oh, I'm just holding on to it in case the other one breaks. It, then it, it turns into like 15 different cords and actually uh -huh. more than one, you know, phone. <laughs> so it's time to let it go. You brought, right. bought that new one. 
it better be working, um, right. you know, and it has a cord or two cords and you got to let go of the other ones because you're going to end up with an electronic box filled with, you know, tons of different stuff. And the mm-hmm. same thing goes with clothing. A lot of people get excited about sales. I'm not saying to not get excited about sales, but yeah. then when you're buying three of the same thing that might be cheaper than buying one thing that you actually want, you're just buying it for the fact that it's on sale and you're right. not going to actually use it in your closet. Um, and so just being more conscious of what you're purchasing and then maybe what you're letting go of or what that's substituting in your life, um, I think is a great principle to just start being more conscious and thinking about once you bring things in, because yes, that thing that you're bringing in clothing, something for your kitchen, decor, whatever it is, has to find a home in right. your house. <laughs> yeah. And so there's only so much room in spaces. Um, right. and so how do we let go of, again, the decluttering what's already there? Yeah. And it is interesting. We all, we have all these like extra reasons why we're bringing something in instead of like, mm-hmm. I need this, let's get it. It's like, it's on sale and I'm motivated by that. Or I need a backup, like scarcity kind of mindset. So it's yes. like interesting the layers that we have of like why we're buying something versus like, I need it. <laughs> like, it's, it's emotional. I mean, yeah. it's very emotional. There are definitely those purchases. Like I need it. It will mm-hmm. help me in some way in my life, work, whatever it is. There are definitely those purchases. Um, And then there's those purchases of like, hey, it looks cute or I want it or Mm -hmm. I love what this bowl looks like. There's those. And then there's the scarcity mindset of like, I need two or I need 500 of the wooden spoons because I feel like we're going to go through the 500 that we have. Right. And then I would just ask myself, ask that person, well, when was the last time you did go through those 500 wooden spoons? you know, or plastic spoons for guests. Like, do you have that many guests in your home? Why do you need to hold on to it? Is that something that has, you know, goes through quickly in your home? And if the answer is yes, then okay, maybe having those extra spoons would be helpful for when guests come over. But if not, there's no reason. It's not going to not be there in three months. Um, So yeah, it's, there are a lot of emotional reasons we buy. And mm-hmm. I'm not telling people not to buy. That would be just completely unrealistic. Although there are people who do challenges of I'm not buying anything new for a month and yeah. I more power to those people. I don't think I could do that. Me neither. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, being conscious of then what's, what's leaving your home. Mm-hmm. If you haven't done this huge, huge purge or what's the reason for it and, or how does it fit into the function of your life? Right. Yeah. Just being more mindful all yeah. around. So yeah, it's like what you bring in, taking time to declutter and then creating those systems that really support your actual life and how you're living in the space. I mean, people talk a lot of, to me about collections. Like, so mm-hmm. they'll collect something that they, a decor piece or something like that. And like, I love antique bowls. And so they're yeah. collecting those and those are not something that you can go out and buy at Target. Right. right. Um, so I will then just ask them when they're collecting them, is the purpose to see them? Because mm-hmm. if not, they should be on, I mean, if it is, then they should be on display. Right. But if not, you're, why are you collecting them? Is it a sentimental thing? Are they all going into plastic bins in your basement and you're never looking at the antique bowls? So again, what is the point of the right. collection? And then you can get into the heart of how often should I be buying these things? You know, um, how should I be saving them? All of that. So, mm-hmm. or like, is it an identity thing? Like, do you want to be known yes. as like the guy that collects bowls? Or like, Yes. It's like so interesting when there's stuff. A like lot that. of people. I mean, like we've got um I just recently like we had this male client, he's like, I'm known as a sneakerhead. And so I have all these sneakers. I mean, yeah. obviously there'd be no way he could wear all these sneakers. I remind him that it's only thirty, you know, three hundred and sixty five days in a year. Right. Um, but he's just like, That's my identity. And yeah. you're correct. I mean, so he's collecting them for that and feels better about having those things in his closet versus not. Right. So, which is mm-hmm. so interesting. Cause it's like, yeah. I do that in different ways. So I hear someone like something I don't want, like sneakers and it's like, Oh, well, and then it's like, here right. I am with what do I, it's probably baskets or pens for me. Like I just uh-huh. need more pens because it's like, everyone has their something. thing. Yeah. Everyone has their thing, no matter mm-hmm. what people be like, Oh, I can get rid of books. I can get rid of clothing. That right. doesn't, but everyone has something that's just a little bit more important paper. Right. I mean, for people, some people right. literally, I mean, you know, everything's online there, everything, a lot of digital things, but people feel safer with keeping paper. Right. Um, and so we're talking to them about how would then do you organize the paper and do you actually go back? Because 80% of that paper, you're realistically not probably going to touch again. So right. you're spending a lot of time filing it. When's the last time you went back to it? Do you do a review every year? Mm-hmm. Um, so 
there's emotional attachment to literally everything. Yeah. It's yeah. so wild, but mm-hmm. also so cool. Cause it's like, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Um, okay. The last question question, um, is, do you have any quick tips you think we could take home and put into place today? I know there's already so many, but just in terms of like, if I was going to go home today and be like, today's the day I become organized. I'm starting today with my 15 minutes. What kind of things would I do? So I want them to number one, schedule that 15 minutes, even mm-hmm. though it might sound ridiculous. I want them to schedule it. And yeah. then I want them to get the tools. Even if it's a trash bag from under your fridge, a yeah. post-it note, whatever it is, I want you to get those tools and be prepared for that decluttering because something will come. So you're going to start with decluttering and then find two spaces, not 15, not five, two spaces that are very big priorities for you instead of saying the whole house. So (laughs) figure out what those priorities are and then set your timer on your phone, microwave, whatever it is. And you can do that tonight. Um, And then figure out after those 15 minutes, trash, donate, goes to a friend, whatever it is, but two spaces, that's a half an hour, Right. break it up. But you can do that today and right. and look for things that you have not touched in a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no hard guidelines, but I, I like to go for in a year because that's at least four seasons that you've been able to not Avoid use it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so a year, if you don't love it and you're like, eh, I'm the fence of it. It's not, I don't feel how, I don't love using it. I don't love how I look in it, whatever it is. Um, and you're not currently using it. It doesn't fit your lifestyle right now as yeah. you are today. So yeah, those are I the things that. to let go of. And then in scheduling, like what would you mm-hmm. say is a good cadence for like making this a lifestyle versus a event? I would say start small because you'll burn out quickly. If you do this again, I'm going to do it in the whole weekend. Um, right. and so I would say go space by space through your house, through the priorities, but give yourself time in between Unless you're feeling excited, then obviously you can go quicker. But right. if you can do something, you know, I say once a month, um, mm-hmm. which might be feel like a lot for people. But if you right. do once a month, even for 15 minutes, you'll, you'll be able to clear a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. it just becomes normal. And then it's yeah. Yeah, who you are. I love this. Um, so not only are you an amazing organizer, you're also an incredible businesswoman. I know I love following your Instagram. You have so many big wins, like such good press coverage. And the exciting play- thing is that you've created something that people can learn from you. Um, so you have a course, but can you kind of talk about like a little bit of an overview of your entrepreneurship journey, like what it's been like to build your own business and how you're inspiring others on that? Path? Sure, sure. So I've been in business now um, for about 15 years. I was a lawyer before becoming an organizing expert yeah. and I have been through a lot. I feel like Mm -hmm. with my business, um, like any other business owners, but the number one thing that I said, I always say has helped me grow my business, helped me expand my business beyond just having an organizing firm and is working with the press and working with the press and media has, you know, been something that I've done all myself. I haven't ever paid for, um, a PR company or paid for media just to begin with. And I started building these relationships with different, um, you know, press outlets, different writers. Um, and it's just been a great journey because I've been able to reach more people and talk about organization through the press. And I yeah. use it as a, not as a vanity thing, because I'm actually very shy and I hate being uh-huh. in the spotlight. I've done it more <laughs> as a, I can reach more people to talk about organization, which I'm so passionate about. And right. this way I can give my tips to more people than just obviously working with them um, mm. locally when with my organizing firm. So um, a little while ago, I've been asked for years, but a little while ago, I, I got this press course out called the Power of Press Playbook. It's an online course, um, and it goes through different templates. Um, it goes through tons of worksheets. I think it's like 85 pages of different worksheets and videos um, yeah. to figure out. I just feel like every small business owner needs to have press in some way to help yes. their business. And that yes. is to get their name out there. That is uh, visibility. Press is different both both locally and nationally, and I go into all those different details. But I want to have these business owners, women in business, have so much success with their business. And I feel like press is a key point of it. I mean, social media changes every single day. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And so the landscape for me has just been press. And I want other people to experience it and all the benefits from it because... I don't know about you, but if there were, I mean, there's a ton of organizers out there and I'm more inclined to buy something that I've seen, you know, real simple or better homes and garden, give their sample of approval on Uh because they're saying, Hey, that person is 
credible. That Legit, person is the yeah. person exactly in, in our article. So um, I'm giving your listeners a um, hundred dollars off if they use the word Kara. Um, so C A R A. Uh, uppercase yeah. um, in all caps, if they want to uh, take the course online, because uh, I just feel like it is such a win-win for you and your business yeah. in any way or shape or form. Um, and I don't want people to feel intimidated about it because again, I had no connections. I am shy, yeah. I, but I've done this and you never know what press is going to hit and change your business. Um, you know, the biggest change for me was I was, uh, I have identical twin girls uh -huh. and the Washington post came to me when they were six weeks old and they're like, we're going to come do a photo shoot at your house. And I oh was like, gosh. I don't really know if this is the best time, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. post, post babies. And I was like, can I wear black? And they're like, no black only color. And I'm like, I don't wear oh color, especially yeah. after having twins. But, um, long story short, the article got picked up, um, not just in, obviously in the Washington post with the page. And I mean, it was this biggest picture I've ever seen of my life, but uh -huh. the Associated Press picked it up. And so 80 other outlets ended up picking up that story. And then yeah. more, you know, people came calling of, can you talk to us about organizing with multiples and kids? And so something that I was like, I don't want to be seen. And it mm -hmm. wasn't about that. It was about the information in the article and setting right. myself up as an organizing expert who has these tips that can help other parents, not just of multiples. Um, and that turned into, you know, a lot more other things um, that I never could have imagined. And so I want, I talked about this in the course, but like, what is press to a small business owner? It's very different for everybody. Um, right. And I guide people through this. So I'm really excited about the course. And I hope people who are any type of small business owner, you know, go and check it out. Yeah. So. I'm excited too, because press is such like, it can snowball so quickly. Just the smallest feature can turn into something incredible. Like I went from like a little local stuff to like the New York times feature, like yep. seeming like so effortless. I didn't like really spend a lot of time like trying to get press but it's like mm -hmm. once you spend a little effort here and there getting a little bit then it just it's I guess in terms of time input to what you can get out of it comparing that to social media like press just is less effort and way more impact so if you are a small 100%. business owner where content's not your main game like that's a really great place to put your focus and then it has yes. so many other benefits like the validation factor and just mm -hmm. kind of like the stamps of approval and yeah, just getting to access bigger audiences that, you know, you'd never be able to touch. So yeah, it's definitely yeah. worth and it for real. It is worth it. Um, I mean, I it impacts my business bottom line 100% every yeah. single time I do an article. And it doesn't matter. Again, I've had small articles. I've had local TV, all the different things. And yeah. they all hit differently, uh, but they're all worth it. And like you, I hate social media and I, I'm shy. And so this yeah. is just a different way. Um to be talking about my business, but also to be helping people. I mean, that's what right. really what motivates me. And I talk about that a lot in the course. And that's why I think people keep the, you know, these um, writers uh, keep coming back to me because I give them so much more than right. a sentence. I'm like, here, here's the article, but yeah. I, I want them to feel good about it because in the end they're going to, you know, print it wherever they're going to print it or online and, they want people coming to their site to read it. And so right. the better they look, you know, the right. better, the more they're going to come back to me for tips and all of that. So yeah. um, it's very cyclical and I love it. Uh, and I want other women owned businesses to get out there and do this for themselves. It, yeah. Like you said, it takes, I think, less effort than mm -hmm. crafting a social media post and having it go to who knows how many people. Um, right because people miss your posts on social media right. every day. <laughs> right. And like press, you're like sort of leveraging a team. It's like mm -hmm. the reporter is like a trained person. And so you providing yep. them real value is going to get you out there in a way that looks very like polished and well done that you couldn't mm -hmm. really do yourself versus you crafting your own caption. Like, right. It's just, yeah, it's like a free team to like it is. help promote it is. you. Yeah. It is. And then they'll put it on their social media sometimes and, yeah. you know, and all you did was give a few tips of, right. and you're in, and so, and everyone will say to me, oh, well, I don't know what to talk about. And there's so many people talking about the same things. And no, I, I fully believe you are an individual. You have stuff yeah. to talk about. You have a different life than everyone else's. Um, so you have value. And so I don't want that to be something that stops people of saying, you know what, I, I can't be an expert. There's too many yeah. out there. I have nothing new to say. You do. 
You right. absolutely do. There just has to be one new ad. Like look at what everyone's saying and add something different or find what's missing. And like, there yep. you go. You added value. It's not like something completely different. That right. You, you don't have to yeah. reinvent the wheel. There's different types of press, which I talk about in my yeah. course too. Um, current events, not, not current events. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a hundred different ways. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, yeah. what do you have next coming up? Any fun projects or ah, we have a lot a of projects. <laughs> oh, no, no break. Right? No break. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, no break. Um, and I think it's I love what I do. Um, mm-hmm. I we get to work with wonderful clients. Um, and my team is great. And so there, there's no, I guess, stopping. Um, right. and uh, I mean, my team gets some breaks over right. the holidays, right. obviously. Right. Um, but people want to get organized. And so it just incentivized me to keep going and do this because look, there's a need out there. Again, all of us buy too much. All of us are holding on to stuff. We move, we downsize, we do life is happening. And so it's just, it's really exciting. And so yeah. no slowing down. We've got some great right. clients coming up and I don't know. Just so, add it. I love it yeah, so much. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, where can everyone find you online? What's the best place uh, to connect? Yes. So I'm on Instagram at Rachel Organizes. Uh-huh. And then my website is rachelrosenthal.co. Okay. Um, and there's a ton of information over there as well. Yeah. So those are the two places. And come find me. I'm, re- I'm doing Rachel's Resources, which is a weekly um, Instagram live. And I'm going to have Kara as my guest yes. uh, one week. So I'm excited about that. But that's been fun. We're organizing all these different experts in their fields and yeah. talking about different topics, which started during COVID. I put it on pause and people asked me to bring it back. So I'm excited, excited oh, to talk so to fun. you. We've yeah. had a lot of people on, so it's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, so much to look forward to. Everyone yeah. go connect with Rachel and yeah. thank you so much for your time. There's so many good tips in here that I know everyone's going to get to grab onto and be like, okay, I'm ready. Like well, it's time. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It was fun. Of course. Um, thanks for listening. And if you've got more episodes to catch up on, binge on. Don't let me stop you. But if you've got a second, you should come say hi on Insta at MakespacePod. And if you're an overachiever, you can also leave a review and I'll love you forever. If you're new here, hit that follow button to officially become a DIY queen and join all the amazing humans tuning in every week.